Welcome to Dude RV. I really appreciate you guys stopping by, and you got here just in time. I've got something fun and exciting for us to check out today. If you hear that in the background, those are cicadas. And and when we, when we hear cicadas here in Texas, that means it's hot, really hot and humid. Today, it's 100 degrees. They always tell me the best you can expect from your RV airflow system is about a 20 degree reduction in temperature. Why is it that my RV doesn't do that? 10, maybe, maybe 10 degree lower. And if I show up in the middle of the day and then plug in and turn on the air conditioner, it never gets, it never gets cool in the RV. I figured out why. It's the RV airflow system. It's the way the air moves in the RV. And I have, I have improved my RV airflow system. So let me show you how I did it. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome to Dude RV. I really appreciate you stopping by. You got here just in time. We're about to do some DIY repair work on the RV air system. Uh, man, it's, it's hot here in Texas and we gotta do everything we can to cool things down. And I guess YouTube uh, algorithm knew that because it suggested that I watch this video the other day. Uh, it was a gentleman, wait a minute, gotta wipe the sweat off my face. It was a gentleman that was working on the plenum inside his air conditioner. Now RV air conditioners are notorious for not being very efficient and part of that's the way they're designed. So I'm gonna delve a little bit into that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the Dude RV version of that DIY thing. I'm gonna pop the cover off this air conditioner and we're gonna explore why it's not putting out a whole lot of air. Now, if we don't work, if we open this vent, we got a lot of air dumped right here. That's the dump vent. But we have a duct system and it doesn't put out that much air, surprisingly. We actually get more air from that than we do from that. And part of the reason is the way this connects and I'll show you that one here in a moment. So I'll, I'll show you why we don't get much air out of it. But for, for this test, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn on the fan and I've I got this little anometer, little wind speed meter. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the, the difference. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that on camera or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. If, if you can't see it, then I'll tell you. We're going to turn on just the fan. That is high. All right, so we've, we've got the fan blowing and coming out of the dump right here. We get a 13, about 13 mile an hour wind. Now if we open the other side, that's going to drop. It drops, well, not too much. It drops down to mm, 12, 12 miles per hour wind. We close both of those, or with both of those open, we go over here and you can see that we, we have like a six mile an hour wind. So let's close our dump valves. That jumps up to eight, eight miles an hour. So eight is the number to beat. So, so between seven and eight mile an hour wind coming out of the vents before modification. So let's pop this cover off and take a look at what's inside and see what we can do to improve it. Well, now that I have the AC cover off, let, let's take a look and see what it is that we've, what I've discovered. First thing I notice is up here, this is the duct opening 
and as you can see in there way in the back it's kind of dark hold on let's light it up fortunately Thor installed a, a, a splitter if you will uh, that plastic device that kind of divides the airflow but if you look here I've got this big hole going back somewhere and then there's space behind that side as well uh, there's no insulation right there which is kind of creating a ripple effect it's not real smooth so and then on this side we got the same thing notice that on this side the black thing is there on this side the black thing is there so it's not really stopping air from going back into that corner so what I'm going to do is fill in these voids and get get it all taped up so it's a, a smooth airflow and then I'm going to figure out how to how to split this airstream smoothly because uh, some of what I saw on the YouTube videos I, I don't think will work quite well and I've got the same issues back here you'll notice the black black things kind of out of place there's a big void where there shouldn't be so I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean all that up and see what I can do to improve this airflow I almost forgot all right so here's here's what the now I have power tools but since I really want this to be benef a beneficial video for anyone if you don't have tools but you've got you got a little bit of craft skills uh, this video is for you and if you do have tools this video is for you so the first thing that what the material we're going to be working with to for our ducting it's a craft panel and by this at Lowe's it's in the lumber section I found this over actually by sheetrock it's in a box in the aisle and then we're going to use metal tape this is in the HVAC department way back by plumbing and since this foam board is it, it's pretty solid stuff you know it's cuttable with a knife but we want to get a nice straight cut and I'm, I've found a tool to add this is a this is cobalt this is a, the Lowe's brand this is a three-in-one folding saw Hey, that that's RV friendly right there. You can put this in your in your toolkit with whatever. And if you need to cut some something, you've got a metal cutting blade. You've got a wood cutting blade. I actually think there's three or two wood cutting blades. Anyway, a three in one folding saw. That way you'll always have a saw with you. I'll be cutting that outside because that's going to leave some sawdust. All right, it's getting hot. I better get to work. Bedroom is done. Of course, I didn't show you the bedroom because I was, this was my learning experience so that when I go to the, the second air conditioner, I look like a professional, like I know what I'm doing. All right, so here, here's something else that I wanted to address. This is the air filter. Not sure how well it comes through, but you can see that there's a little bit of of dirt on one end you notice this just on the one side there you go yeah, you can see it now very rarely do does dust get on there until that's absolutely completely full and that, that's due in part to the way the air conditioner cover is set up what you have is, is this is the inner piece and this is the outer piece so the outer piece has downward ducts so you can get that straight down blast on this side we have a channel so this channel is five inches by one inch
Looking up here, the opening for the blower is five and a half by four and a half. Five and a half by four and a half. And that, that's five inches by one inch. So basically, you're, you're moving a whole lot of air through a, uh, your, through a big opening and pushing it into a smaller opening so you're choking off your flow. And also, because you have to have the separation here, so this is where the air comes into the plenum. Like this. So the air's being forced into that. Or it goes out through the ducts over here. But basically you, your air is... Well, if you notice, this is the, the intake. The intake is partially blocked here, and then partially blocked here. So the air doesn't really ever get sucked up through here until this is completely clogged. I understand the purpose of the design, but it's not a very efficient design for airflow. So what I've done is I've, I've boxed this up in a, such a way that it increases the space for here so i'm not going to be using the downward draft i don't need to because man i have got some serious air coming out of those vents now and i'll show you the difference with the meter but when we until when we get to that point we're not to that point yet primarily because amazon has not delivered the airflow meter that's why we're holding off and just doing the one for practice but now the air is stream is split into two and it flows into the ductwork no longer do i actually need those downdraft vents because I've, i'm getting enough air coming out of the ductwork system now that it actually is, is it, it's working the way it's intended to work and I've eliminated that, that plate. So the inner plate is gone. And I won't be using the down, down draft vents. I'll have use of the whole intake side. And I'm going to put in better filters so that the air is actually cleaner. And all of this will make the AC units last longer. All right. That's it for the moment. Stay tuned. More to come. So the first thing we're going to do. Now I've already practiced. And I've actually already got a, a cut out here. So I kind of know what I'm doing. I had to learn. First thing I need to do on this one is fix that. Because that, that's interrupting the flow of air. They just put them in the wrong place. It's going to reduce the amount of airflow that I get in to this side. But I think it'll work out okay. So I'm going to put a one inch piece of styrofoam here. And we'll put an angled piece here. Rather than telling you, I'll just get it all cut out, put in place, and then I'll show you what we're doing. main pieces cut out let's go inside okay 
So I've got our angle pieces in. And what I'm going for here is to increase the intake area so that there's more air available for the intake side and then redirect the pressure side into these ducts. And so I'm going to, I'm manufacturing an angled splitter here. And then I've filled in the voids that are causing turbulence on both sides. And now I'm going to tape it and seal it. That's a strange place for a hole right there. I'm going to tape that up. I don't want to make sure all my incoming air goes through the filters. So let me do let me do some tape work. I got all the taping. Most of the tape. I got some taping done. This is not the most beautiful tape job, but we're not going for beauty. We're we're looking for function over form. So I've reduced a lot of the jagged. I'm gonna put one more piece of foam in here on either side because I've got that, and I'm gonna kind of fill that void in. And then we'll cap it off. We're getting close to the end. So I filled in the, the little bit of void that was here. And I still have a little, little bit of a lip there. And a little bit of a lip there, but way better than it was. And I'm not going for perfection. I'm just going for better air. Cooler air. All right, I'm gonna close it in. There it is, all boxed in. Now we're splitting the airstream. I guess all, all that's left is to pull out the little wind speed monitor. See what it does. All right, we're, we're turned on. I would not say it's 50% better, but it's uh, 40%. And we're at 11, 12, right at 12 on that one. Yeah, we're 15. <laughs> Whoo! That's the cool spot that's dead right there. That's at roughly 40% more air. Well, that one right there, Shoo, that one feels so good. Whew. All right. And as you can see, we have a whole lot more intake opened up too, which means the filters will be easier to keep clean and they'll, they'll be more efficient that way. I'll cut back in in a couple days. I'll be RV camping. Taking, taking Trudy in for some warranty work. So stay tuned. We're talking about the RV airflow system, the modifications made. We're talking about these modifications that I made to the RV airflow system on both of my air conditioning units. So this is the third, third campsite since I've made that modification. I wanted to give it a real good test so that I can say without, without any hesitation whether it was good or bad. I'm, uh, it's great, it's not just good, it's great. It's almost like I have a third air conditioner. But check this out. According to the dash, it's 101 degrees outside. 101, and it's very humid here in Texas right now. It's we're at first of August. And check this out. So the front air conditioner is showing 82 degrees. Back air conditioner is showing 76 degrees. 
and I've only had them running for about 30 minutes. We just, I just got here, just got set up at Fairfield Lake State Park on my way back north. No question about it. It was worth the time and the $30 I spent to make that, that modification. So if you actually have a roof mount air conditioning system, roof mount with ducts, it, it wouldn't do you any good if you didn't have the duct work. It is so worth taking the time and effort to restructure that plenum and open up the airflow, the intake and the exhaust. It's like I said, it's like having a third air conditioner. It's getting cold in here. <laughs> hard, hard to believe I'm saying that in my, in my RV. I've never said that in my RV in, in August, in July in Texas. I'm getting cold. I think I gotta go outside and warm up. <laughs> All right, so it works, do it. All right, if this is your first visit to Dude RV, I really appreciate you stopping by. Hope you learned something. Hope there was some value for you. If there was, please hit the thumbs up and blast me out across your social media. I'd be so deeply honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. It is my honor. And for my patrons, you rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear? S stay cool. <laughs>